11 minute painting, reading module V.1, by Tan Malin, dub version, aside, what are the forms of non-reading and what are the non-forms the reading might take, poetry equals wallpaper, novel equals design object, text as ambient soundtrack, Duchamp wanted to create works of art that were non-retinal, it would be nice to create works of literature that didn't have to be read but could be looked at, like placemats. The most exasperating thing at a poetry reading is always the sound of a poet reading. The poem you are about to see, the version, is executed in director and plays independently of any intuited reading, voice, practices. It takes place in real time. Unlike a feedback loop it is different each time it is played. The poem you are reading is in BW because BW is more soothing than color. Halfway through, a color randomizer has been utilized to provide a greater sense of visual permutation, change and pleasure. One word, then another, and finally a third follow each other in a kind of slow motion, time-lapse photography. Beside. Poems to be looked at versus poems to be read versus paintings to be sequenced versus paintings to be sampled. Everything that is beautiful is a code for something that is already known. Nothing should be unknown. The program code you are watching generates 16.7 million different shades of color backgrounds. Some of these are suggestive. None of them functions in place of memory. Memory cannot be sequenced. Memory is usually non-designed. You are about to enter. Three rooms. Mirror balls. Roving wallpaper. Disco. Home furnishings. Lifestyle. Getting up. And having a drink. Of course, in some novelistic vein, sequencing is highly absorptive. And so at the subliminal i.e. non-designed level, the sequencing allows reading itself to become abstract, bracketed, hypnotic, and mesmerizing. The problem with most poetry, like most design and architecture, is that it is a little too bourgeois. For this reason, the poem should never be turned off. Like a thermostat, it should regulate the room's energies. This allows the piece to constantly erase itself. As we all know, poetry should aspire not to the condition of music but to the condition of relaxation and yoga. A lot of people think great poems should be memorized, as anyone who has ever read a poem will tell you poems are most beautiful and least egotistical at the exact moment in which they are forgotten, like disco and other four-on-the-floor productions. Each sequence or sentence, i.e., word set, runs 7.2 seconds or the amount of time it takes to pronounce each word, one word at a time. Seven is generally thought to be the number of things the human brain can readily remember. George Muller did pioneering studies on this and his theory is called Muller's number seven. Hence, most phone numbers are seven digits in length. 7.2 seconds is hopefully just long enough to get the reader viewer into a groove. It might suggest a strobe light going off at timed intervals. The interval can be beautiful because the interval can be dubbed relaxation like non-designed home decor, has no real bounds, it supplements that thing known as real life, that is why it is so pleasurable to read. Someone, I think, said the time for poems written with words and the era of reading poems with feelings in them is long gone. Today. No poem should be written to be read and the best form of poetry would make all our feelings disappear the moment we were having them. This sequencing of events constitutes a code more uncrackable and soothing than anything we could actually see. Paintings to be read, poems to be looked at, a beautiful poem should rewrite itself one half word at a time, in predetermined intervals, with their numerous circuit boards. Televisions and computers do this. Together, they enhance the micro-production and sequencing of feelings here before thought inaccessible, complex, or purely entropic. If all poems could just be codes projected onto a wall, those names, accessories, for things cancelling the wall would be more beautiful than anything we could feel. Nothing that is negative is simple. 
everything that is artificial is related to everything else in the room. Poetry should aspire to the most synthetic forms, the colors or numbers around it, and the most synthetic forms are to be found in houses with rectilinear walls, hallways, and foyers. Each wall separates one space from another. Everything that can be divided is divided into its proper sequence, i.e., style, of ones and twos. Private spaces are over-elaborated and under-inhabited. Public spaces are under-elaborated and lack sufficient feedback. Things that are living versus, things that are dead versus, languor. For this reason, poetry ought to be replaced by the walls that surround it and doors that lead into empty rooms. Kitchens and hypnosis. Poetry should be camouflaged into the feelings that the room is having, like drapes, silverware, or candlesticks. All painting should aspire to the condition of encyclopedias, sequencing and BW diagrams. Niagara Falls is just a kind of paint. What would it be like to look at a poem? It would be the most beautiful thing in the room that could stand to be looked at. It would be more beautiful than the thing itself. A beautiful poem is a poem that can be repeated over and over again. You are reading about a poem comprised of a thousand wayward looks. Look, a beautiful poem is a painting that can be repeated over and over again. Repetition is the only thing that makes something more perfect than it already is. For this reason, there is always a gaze that does not reach inside the face I was looking at. That should be the gaze of poems that think they are paintings. Andy Warhol understood this and he repeated the look of a painting every time he painted the same thing over and over and over and over. That is why he painted over the faces of photographs. Nothing is more beautiful than a face when it is repeated like, a word for, makeup. Novels were the earliest form of photography known to the human retina. That is why books are rarely mistaken for paintings. Paintings, unlike words, die the minute they attach themselves to a wall. Someone else said, excitement is the only thing in the world that cannot be predicted. Figure 1. Figure 2. Niagara Falls is just a kind of paint. My name is Dorothy. Because we like to come to a given space of our choosing. Everything we see tends to look like a diagram or flowchart, as if it were designed to produce comfort zones, trans passages, or look, here is a house, here are its binary coordinates. I was reading a story about the anti-actress Chloe Sevigny, who is the most chaste after fashion trendsetter now because she's ugly beautiful, wears vintage prairie dresses one day and Eve St. Laurent the next and seems negligent and muse-like at the same time. She often claims not to know what she is wearing. Someone said, she moves around the room like an anti-cheerleader. She goes shopping in Hello Kitty underwear. She played the Vapory Deb in the last days of disco and, in Boys Don't Cry a trailer park girl who falls in love with a boy who's really a cross-dressing girl. She can make a beret look very recent. Her publicist announced, she is trying to dissociate herself from fashion at the moment. When I think of Chloe Sevigny I feel the codebook wobbling on my retina. Someone said, Anticipation is an interesting and difficult thing to produce. The ultimate lifestyle exercise for a home is its television. It produces error after error. If knowledge unlike pleasure takes place in the network, a poem should pursue itself in a set interval of time i.e. The time allotted to it, the ideal interval is programmed, usually 3 or 7 or 12, and expands indefinitely. In that way all the words, like portraiture or shades of color, could be replaced by something that reminded one of a couplet, an integer, a television set, a phone number or the revolving seasons. If one doesn't have a television set it is necessary to make one. It is now spring or it is now autumn when you read this. The temperature is the same across all three screens. Somewhere it is summer and I am losing someone because she is already gone. The television set is sitting on the windowsill. It resembles a canvas. These are the feelings television has and these are the ways we make our feelings disappear into them.
like small pieces of ice. The best paintings, like poems, make our feelings evaporate at a constant rate like a disco, which is nothing but a rotating system of words masquerading as numbers. I think it is snowing, and I worry that the guests will be late. I flick on the screens, this is an election year, of course. How do incite the idea of reading without reading? How do accessorize reading as a practice similar to entertaining? One comes and then one goes, one adds something and then one subtracts something else. The most precious commodity in modern life is time. I live in a house like a series of loops, plus signs.